All right, yes. we're good to go. Good to go. So, um, yeah. you know, first and foremost, how yes. happy to be out at Rock on the Range again. This is stoked. the second time you guys have played, right? S stoked. You know, in you know, our opinion, one of the biggest shows, if not the biggest show of the year for, for rock bands. So I'm more excited to be back. Good. Well, sure. you know, fill in the yeah. sight riggers of PCM on what's going on with the band. Well, you know, we've just been touring nonstop, <clears throat> currently on tour with Papa Roach, and, um, you know, just trying to gear up to get this album out, which, um, you know, we talked a little bit off camera about, we're hoping to have out this summer, hopefully um, or, uh, late June, early July, you know, that's what we're hearing, so, you know, it's just frustrating being out without a record and, you know, being at a place mm -hmm. that wasn't really working with us, and, um, you know, but to finally be out, um, we really feel like, you know, it's new life been, you know, given to the band, and other than that just stand on the road you know we just a constantly touring band and we don't believe in going home and just if we want to stay relevant we got to stay on the grind and we got to stay out there playing no of course right. so i mean last man standings like right. tearing up everywhere i right. mean it's all over satellite you got all yeah. the sports like right. so i'm sure you're happy with the way that's performing yeah i mean i think we're a little <clears throat> you know surprised at how successful it was with with no help from the label at the time mm -hmm. you know with releasing it we did that all on our own so to have the song you know, it'd be doing as well as it is. It's 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 a it's a tribute to the song, and it's a, um, it's it's humbling when a song just kind of takes off and has its own entity, and especially with it being such a contrast with 155. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's what we wanted. Pop Evil was about acoustic guitars, and it's about being heavy as well, and that's what we wanted. We're a very mood-driven band. Didn't want to be pigeonholed. Uh, you know, in this, we always have to be heavy. Always, always, we always have to be softer. You know, we wanted to make sure we. Um, you know, we, we write songs according to how we feel and hopefully to help others as well. Oh, of course, well, yeah. the diversity shows, and you guys right. are across the board. Right. So. Well, thank you, I can't wait. And you heard, you've heard the new record. I did. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So you know yeah, well, we're excited for this new one and just feel it's the next chapter for the band. Do you know what the next single is going to be? Monster, you mean. Okay. Yep, yep, it's already started a little bit. I think it's official ad days of June 6th. So we're really excited. I like about Boss's that. daughter. That's, that's, <laughs> that's coming too. I think that might be third. So, you okay. know, considering we have success with Monster You Made, it's just that, you know, we want to make sure we, we give respect to the fans that, you know, love 155. And, you know, Monster is a very lyrical driven song. And, and um, one that, you know, I believe very personal to me. And, and um, you know, it's going to, you know, help a lot of people. No doubt. So what's it like for you as an artist when, when the fans come up and say that, you know, your music helped them through something? I mean, I think that's the biggest gift. I mean, I think it's something hard to understand. You, you think you can understand, you know, but not living in their shoes or knowing the people, you know, you really don't get to feel the emotion until some of those similar things happen to you. And you're like, wow, you know, maybe it's a loss of a loved one or, or it's, um, you know, contemplating, you know, uh, bad decisions, whether it be suicidal racisms or, or I know what, we've had a lot of that 155 especially mm -hmm. saved a lot of people from maybe you know doing something that you know, I believe they shouldn't do you know and, and obviously I always choose life and, and um, you know but it's just it's what you want to do you want to help people and, and even the people that never have told us or don't get the opportunity to tell us that you help I mean, even all the music that, that helped save me and helped save this band to get to where we are you know that I'll probably never be able to tell those artists and I know probably some mm -hmm. of them but um you know, it's not about necessarily telling the artists. Um, it's about just letting the music speak to the talking. You know, so we're excited, excited for the next chapter for us. That's great. So I've been doing a feature with PCM, like yes. asking artists, you know, what their favorite summer festival touring yeah. experience, either as an attendee or performing. Do you have one to right. share? I, I think they've all been amazing. We did Point Fest. I mean, obviously, Rock on the Range is is, uh, is special, not just for the playing, but it's it's like a big old sixth grade camp it reminds me it's a reunion with people like yourself and with mm. radio guys with people in the business with fans from all over the country that come to this event and um of course with the other bandmates i mean no other place do you really get this many great bands in one place at one time so oh, it's like of course. it's like tour bus hopping yeah you, know, you go say <laughs> hey to everybody that you know that, that you've kind of toured with throughout the years and it's a, it's a special day yeah but any festival is um is, is amazing to, to get um, that many people out and for a cheap ticket to see that many great bands. I mean, that's what it's about at the end of the day, the fans. Oh hey, yeah, they said it's like summer camp. <laughs> it is a lot like summer camp. It is. There's no doubt about it. That's mm -hmm. great. So what are the immediate plans for after today? Um, just the immediate plans are to just tour nonstop. You know, I mean, then after Papa Roche, we're going to do some stuff with Crossfade, which we're really excited to see them guys back and back with us. And uh, obviously get the album out. 
and um, just start spreading the album and get this new music out. You know, the first record was kind of like, um, you know, a part-time record for us. So this mm -hmm. this was this really feels like our debut album. So we're really excited for that and the energy that comes with that. That's good. Yeah. So did what you try? Did you try anything different with the writing process or anything? Oh, a lot different. You know, I mean, um, just totally wanted to be held accountable for what what I wrote and what I say and what, what what I'm saying in, in the songs differently than the first record. You know, we we budgeted that first album on our own and we didn't have money to waste. So when we did a song, whether it sounded like a pop evil song or we even we didn't even maybe know what that meant, the songs were going on the record. We didn't have time to really to we didn't really have time to you know. I mean, oh, the writing, it just was, you know, we, we um, really went to the, um, the drawing board and, you know, made sure we had 8, 9, 10, 11 drafts, uh, you know, really wanting to, you know, make sure that all the songs were lyrically strong, at least in our opinion, you know, where we can, like, combat and or combat that and, and put, you know, and transfer that to the stage, you know, so it's just been, it's been an incredible, incredible experience. We moved to Chicago for six months. Um, you know, recorded it with Johnny K, who's doing on the new Megadeth record actually yeah. now, and um, you know, it's just um, it just was a great experience, and to be able to all be in one place collectively, the five of us, and, and write a record on the first album. You know, people were working day jobs, and half of us were here, half of us were there. It's just it just was a mess. You know, it's it's it's, a, it's amazing that the album Lipstick on our first record did as well as it did. You know, it was just demos. You know. And Ended up being, it's a good album. <laughs> yes, no, it's a great, it's a great album. But to us, you know, yeah. as as the writers and the artists, you know, it was, it, we didn't get the big time budget that you know some of the bands in our position at that point did. And, and you know, and having the big budget for this record, it's just important to know the things that you know we were able to do for this record, and and, and not just from a budget standpoint, just having the time to do because you know we were we were in the studio, we'd already had the studio, so it wasn't just having the money, it was having the money so we could have the time to do it, you know, and um, that's pretty special when you can put all your time into the music, you mm -hmm. know, when, you know, some bands can't or don't have the luxury to do that, and we certainly have never had the luxury to do that until this album, so, you know, it's just, um, you know, it makes you excited instead of being like, oh, here's a new record, listen to track one, mm -hmm. four, seven, <laughs> don't listen to two, and four, you know what I mean, like, it's just one of those things for us, you know, we demo 30 songs, and when you put the album on, we're proud of it. You know, you can listen to all the whole album, and, and you know, we're proud of every song. So for the first time in our career, my career personally, you know, I've never really been able to say that. So um, you know, it's well, I mean, what I love so much about both of the, I have had the pleasure of hearing both albums. Sure, and like, sure. I mean, you can just put it on, start to finish, and let it go. And like, yeah. so many albums you can't do that with and, anymore. And, and thank <laughs> you, for, and thank you for that. And, and we certainly try to do that as we revamp Lipstick on the Mirror as it evolved. I mean, I think there was like four or five different versions of it, so mm. it was. Um, it's definitely an evolution, and I think in the position that we were in, we needed that. You know, like we were always told, you know, just go with go with the um, the momentum that your band had. It was the Lipstick on the Mirror started with three songs, then it was six songs, then it was nine songs, then it was twelve songs, then it got cut back and trimmed, and then some bonus songs. And um, to see the evolution of that song to get us a record deal and to get us here, you know, was um, pretty incredible. And I think it's living proof to other bands that you know you really. You don't need ten song album to to do. You just need one great song, and that'll snowball. And um, you know, slowly but surely, you'll you know you'll increase the demand for your for your music and then your course. bands. So yeah. we, we can talk about yeah. this now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> album um, just fresh off from managers on the tour of us. Um, album's coming out on um, June twenty eighth. So we, you know, so we're gonna make the announcement today at Rock on the Range, and um, obviously we're gonna make a big deal about it because you know our fans have been so patient. And um, you know we're we're just excited to be at a, at a new at a new label. I mean, I guess I'll tell you that too. It's it's E1 Entertainment, so we're excited to be with them and awesome. the home of Black Label Society. And and um, it's just it's just nice to be at a record label that's excited about your music. And at the end of the day, that's what it's about the music. And um, to be around people, you know, you, you just met our manager, people like that that are in the business that are excited about the music. That's when you have a winning. You can have. I mean, obviously time will tell, but you can have a that kind of a winning attitude it's just not about the people which is important but when people are that driven and believe in the music that's when the music can win because you know one day we're all going to be dead and gone but that music can still be here you know and that's um that's important to me so is that kind of what you hope for your legacy uh, yeah i mean i, I you know uh, even if it's a one-hit wonder if we can have one song that can help people uh, you know when we're not here i mean i think that's pretty it's pretty amazing you know have a time capsule of what you know you know what this 
century is all about is is um is important to be a part of that and an honor at, at you know at the same time so you know if that's what god's got in his plan great if not you know um, we're okay too you know our, our, our families are still proud and you know it took a lot to get here and we're definitely trying to stay humble about it and um to just keep um keep putting out as good music as we can you know while we're while we're able to do so Great. Well, yeah. thank you so much for catching oh, up with pleasure. me. Oh, my pleasure. Are you kidding me? I love you to death. So thank you. Thank you, Rat. Thank you for coming on. And the tour bus uh, tour bus video is right here. So, uh, no, it's, it's awesome. Great. So, is there day. anything else you want to share with PCM uh, other just, than get out there and get the album? <laughs> thank you. Thank you to all the fans. Um, you know, again, just just be educated. You know, you guys have the power. It's important for, for fans to know that, you know, this industry is slowly but surely doesn't believe in rock and roll. And that means that's a direct insult to me as a fan, not just as an artist. You know, um, unless you're big time top 40 peeps, and they're not really cared about, you know, our money. But rock and roll people, rock and roll music, people come live. They come to see live. That's why these great festivals like Rock on the Range are so important. And um, if the demand increases by people being educated, whether it's just buying a simple, spending a dollar on iTunes instead of ripping it for your favorite bands, little bits, and understanding that, you know, hopefully more money will be spent on a bigger picture for our music. And, um, you know, hopefully this, this industry and cycles will, will start to learn how to, you know, brand and create rock stars again, just like they did back in the 80s that we all love. Um, so that's what I'd like to say. Just be educated, you know. Um, um, learn about, you know, what the benefits of purchasing you know, records of your favorite bands as opposed to just ripping them. Because obviously people, if they're going to rip, they're going to rip them. I mean, I guess, how are you going to stop things? People want to do that. And I guess that's fine. But if you're ripping the music, then come watch the shows. Spend the money then live. Come support those bands you like, whether it's Pop Evil or, or any band, but especially new music. Because it's harder and harder for uh, new rock bands to break. And that means hopefully it's not going to be harder for our kids' future one day. So, you know, um, we can help our kids, you know, um, enjoy the same genre of music we love, rock and roll. That's what I'd say. Awesome. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Well, definitely. Well, thank you.